in the first case we said for a or b we have a probability of a plus probability of b minus the probability of a intersection b and we said in the case of mutually exclusive events okay this goes to zero okay so this term goes away then we also talk about joint event where p of a intersection b we said is equal to p of b times p of a given b but in the case of independence it is just p of a times p of b that is all we've said in the previous slide now so by extension then we can also say let me go back a bit okay you see if we have p of a given b okay is equals to this then p of b given a is also p of b intersection a is equals over what p of a right so i can also equally write let me okay let me go to the new slide and write that uh -huh. so which means that p of let me change this uh, from the original formula we said p of a given b has occurred okay is equal to what p of a okay intersection b okay over what p of what b that's the first event okay so from there we were able to write when we did a cross multiplication we said p of b comes here okay that then let me clean this side so when you take this off it goes like that so in the same way we can also write p of b giving a this time b is the second event and a is the first it's also going to be p of what p of what b intersection what a over what p of what the first event a so by cross multiplication we can bring the p of a here right so that will be p of a okay times p of b given a then we clean this size okay so clearly you can all see when we say probability today and tomorrow uh it is the same as the probability of tomorrow and today okay or let's say if we say ama and uh, kojo is the same as kojo and ama okay so what we are saying is p of a and intersection b which is this one eh is the same as p of b intersection what a ah uh, so we know this this one we know it so ama and kojo is the same as kojo and ama so if that is the case then it means that this probability here which is this one it's also the same as what p of what uh the second one so if you look at it carefully you see they are the same thing ah uh, good so that helps us to get a very important rule okay a basis for the very important rule okay which we refer to as a base rule okay so by change of subjects if i divide both sides by If I divide both sides by uh, P of B, okay? I divide this side by P of B, and then this side by P of B. Okay, obviously this will cancel out that. You get it? Uh -huh. So we'll come to this formula, which we refer to as the, the base rule, okay? Mm -hmm. The base rule. Okay, so later we'll see how to make use of the base rule. Okay. Please concentrate on the class and 
let's forget about YouTube videos and all that, okay? Focus all attention on the class and understand. Then after that, we'll talk about other issues. Yeah. So moving on, um, where is this? Okay. Yeah, so we are done with, um, oh, what's happening here? Okay, just give me a minute, I think. It might be an issue of. Just a minute. Let me let me check. Just reopen the same file again. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's continue. So, yeah, so we've talked about the base rule. We've talked about the multiplication rule. We have an example here. Or oh, let me just touch on the multiplication rule, okay? I made mention of that earlier, but let me touch on it. So we are saying that for independent events, okay, the pro if you have two events, A and B, and you want to find the probability, it's just the product of A times, the product of A and B. So let me say probability of A times probability of B. And by extension, if you have more than three events, then it's just going to be the probability of or the product of the various probability of all those such events, okay? So that gives us the multiplication rule for independent events. Now we have an example here to look at. It says in a certain population, 10% of people can be classified as being high risk for a, a disease or a heart attack. Two people are randomly selected from this group or from this population. What is the probability that exactly one of the two, okay, exactly one of the two is high risk? Okay, so you need to first define the event. We let our first event be H, which is a high risk and not at risk. Okay, and we've been told that. 10% of people can be classified as high risk. So it means that the probability of H, P of H is what, 10%, okay? 10%, 10 over 100 is 0 0.1, okay, good. And obviously not at risk means one minus 0 0.1, okay? That is a complement of being at risk uh, for the heart disease. So probability of not at risk is one minus 0 0.1, which is 0 
Okay. Then we've been asked to find the probability that exactly one is at risk. Exactly one is at risk has to two implications. Either the first person selected, because we are selecting two people at random. If you are selecting two people, they are two different people. You understand? So the first person comes, and then the second person will come. We are not going to replace. You understand? So this is without uh, replacement. But they are two different words, people. You are, do you understand? Good. So we have the probability of the first person being a high risk and the second person not being a high risk or the possibility of the first person being a not at risk and the second person being what? At high risk. Okay, these are the two possibilities. Okay, so now we, it means like we've combined both addition and what? Uh, modification, okay, good. So in our formula, this is going to be what? First, we have to know that H and N and then N and H are mutually what? Exclusive. So per addition rule, this will be P of the first event is H intersection N. Okay, plus we are using addition rule now. So plus N intersection H. Okay, the term formula, which is minus A, P of whatever. A. You see, these are two different events. Here we are saying that first person, we are selecting two people, but the first person should be what? A high race. Here you are selecting two people, the first person should be not at risk. So how can, is it possible to select two people where the first person is a high risk at the same time the first person is not, not a high risk? It's not possible. So the two events are mutually what? Exclusive, okay, good. So per the addition formula, the third term will not even come because the two events are mutually what? Exclusive. Then again, what we need to understand is the fact that when it comes to H and N, like we said, because we are selecting H and N, the general formula should be the first, the probability of the first times the probability of the second giving the first. But this is the case of the Bernard and the Abraham scenario, okay? The fact that the first person has a heart attack does not mean the second person should have a heart attack or should be at risk for a heart attack. They are two independent what? people, okay? So we are in a, an independent scenario. And anytime we have independence, we said that then the probability of their joint events is just the product of their independent probability. So it will be P of H, okay, times P of N, okay, plus in the same way to the second event are also is the same people. So we are going to have independence. So P of N times P of what? H. Okay, good. So which means that this is what we come to. Then you can factor in this word we've written on the right side. Okay, so we can bring in our probabilities. We said P of H is 0 0.1. And then P of N is 0 0.9 plus 0 0.9 times 0 0.1. When we do the multiplication, this will give us 0. 0 0.09 plus 0 0.09. So when we add the two, we'll get 0 0.018. Okay. So technically, there is a, a possibility, an 18% chance. Okay. That's exactly one 
of two people selected will be at risk of a heart attack. Any question? Any question? Okay, Felix has a sound up. Felix. Yeah, Felix. Felix, you cannot mute yourself. Felix uh, Bulipa. Bulipa, Felix, you cannot mute yourself. I've asked you to unmute. Okay, let's take Saki. Saki, this mark, unmute yourself. Yes. Hello, sir. Yes. Yes, go straight mm. to point, please. So can you please come? Can you please come again by explaining the example given to us? I mean Why the question that over here. You understand. Hmm. Which point did you not understand? How you what, what you stated from the first one, P um, into brackets, H intersection N, union N intersection H. Hey, so that one, when you say exactly one of two people, and uh, you are selecting two people, you said find the probability that exactly one of the two. Okay. You get it. So if I'm selecting, let's say I have two people, one is Bernard, one is Abraham. Then there are two possibilities. It's either Abraham, who is the first person I'm selecting, is going to be at risk, and Bernard is not at risk. Or it can be the other way, that Bernard is rather the one at risk, and Abraham is not. Okay. You understand? Yeah, That's what we mean by exactly one of the two. So when we say exactly one of the two, we don't know who will be. So it can either be that Abraham is at risk and Bernard is not, or Bernard is at risk and Abraham is not. Okay. Yeah. I get it now. Good. Any other question? Okay, this is Felix. In fact, I was facing challenges uh, of network. Say, yes. How, how you, you came out with uh, 0 0.1 and also. Uh, 0 0.1 is 10 percent, 10 over 100 is 0 0.1. Okay. Okay, I think we are we are good. Those are the only answer. Okay, let's continue. Uh, Gideon. Gideon, you have your hand up. Stop. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, Gideon, go straight. Sir, your... yeah, not a trace. Uh, zero... yeah, not a trace. Zero point nine. Is that the constant uh, formula or like it varies or it can change? Oh, Gideon, when when you take zero point nine. Listen, when you take somebody. They said you are either at risk or you are not yeah. at risk. Do you understand? Yes, please. So if the chance yes, of please. being at risk is 0 0.1, then the chance of A complement is what? One minus what? A, not so. Yes, sir. Eh. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, yes, Linda. Linda, your hand is up. So please, is it always given uh, uh, the pH, which is 0 0.1? Yes. They always give it in the question. Yes, so in the question you'll be stated, you'll be given a clue. Okay. 
Sometimes yeah. I might not give you the probability of being at rest. I might not give you the probability of not. So what time is it? You understand? <laughs> what time is it? Okay. Are you okay? So what time is it? Yes, please. Good. Any other question? Okay, let's continue then. Yeah, so we are done with the concept of uh, probability. We've looked at what an experiment is, what a sample space is, what an event is, what probability is. We've looked at the axioms of probability. Uh, we've looked at um, the rules on joint events, okay, and the union of events. And we've looked at conditional probability and how to derive the uh, the base okay uh, formula now we want to begin with probability distribution and um, to describe a probability distribution okay uh, like from the very beginning you remember we have something like frequency distribution and we said you talk about the distribution of the data mm -hmm. the shape of the data and anytime we wanted to plot the data we plot the frequency against what the, the class, okay? So you have the frequency here uh, in the histogram form. Then we connect it with some uh, curves, okay? For it to look like that, mm -hmm. good. This time in probability distribution, we are going to talk about the probability, the chance of the various occurrences, okay? So it's going to rather be probability Okay, in place of the frequency. Uh, and then we'll talk about, so it's the same thing, just that now the frequencies tend to work, probability. Okay, good. Now, the first concept we need to understand before we start will be the concept of the X itself. Okay, the X which will come on the S axis. And that is what we refer to as a random variable. Okay, now a random variable is a measurable function. Uh, keyword is a measurable word function mm, from a sample space of event omega to a measurable space S of values of possible of possible values of the variable. Okay. Sometimes we add where S belongs to the set of real numbers. Okay, so technically we write that X is a function, the random variable is a function that maps, okay, elements within, okay, the sample space S, okay, to real number values. Now let me take it in another context because this is a pure mathematics notation. So let me bring it down in another context for you. Okay. So um, yes, this, this is the second function I wanted to talk about. So we are saying that a random variable is simply a function which maps, okay, elements in what the sample space to real numbers. So it's going to map elements in the sample space, okay, to a real number value. Okay? So to map elements, so it's a function that maps elements in the sample space to the real numbers, okay? Good. Now you see on my first one, I said a random variable is also a stochastic variable, a stochastic process. When we say something is random, uh, it's stochastic in nature, it means that the outcome of that process cannot be predetermined. Okay, so for example, your weather forecast, for example, uh, the results of a football match, uh, the, for example, you get to the bank, whether you'll be served on time or not, they are all stochastic variables. Uh, they are what? probabilistic in nature, which means that they are non-deterministic. 
good. Now let's come back to what we are doing. So we are saying that in very simple terms, the random variable X is a function which maps elements in the sample space to real number what values. Now let me break it down again to the very simplest of forms using an example. Okay, so these are examples of random variables. I think I've mentioned some examples. So now let's take uh, an example to demonstrate what we are saying. Okay, so if we have, let's say we, we are tossing two coins. Uh, we are tossing two coins and then we define the rule or a function hmm, as observing a head so if we define our random variable x as observing a head in an experiment of what the toss of two points okay then the first thing is because we said random variable is a function which maps element from the sample space to run our values let's find the sample space so the sample space in the toss of two points will be what Head, 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 tail, tail, head, go ahead, and tail, tail. Okay, so there's a sample space omega. Good. Now, we have defined the rule as what well, observing a head okay observing a head so the question is how do we map the elements in the sample space to the real number values uh, you only map it based on the given rule. the rule says observing a head so when you come here how many heads are in this outcome how many heads two no, no, no. Each outcome. We are talking about mapping outcome in the sample space to real number value. So the first outcome is what? Head and head. So how many heads are in that outcome? Two. Two. Yes. Second outcome. How many heads are there? One. One. Third outcome. How many heads are there? One. 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 What outcome? What, how many heads are there? Zero. Zero. Very good. So now that we have written it this way, we have to write it in the functional form. Okay? And last time, I introduced you to piecewise functions. Okay? So now we are going to make use of that knowledge. So now that we have written this, you see, we have to write it in the function form. Well, we said x is a function. And the function has these values 0, 1, and 2. So we are going to write in the function form. This is how it look like. It's there. But let me rewrite it. So the function x is defined as. So the values of x are what? 0, 1 and what and two and then it is zero if what if the process or the outcome belongs to what a tail and a tail it was zero when the outcome was what tail tail and then it was one when the outcome was what was a head tail a head tail or a tail head and then it was two when the outcome was what was head head and a head a head head Ahead. I hope it's clear. 
Yes, sir. Okay. Uh -huh. So this is the random function we have written, the random variable, okay? So it's a function, and you can see it's in the function location. And uh, just to record, you remember we did piecewise function, even in exams, you had a question like that. So the function is defined as, uh, is equal to maybe square root of one minus X, when X is less than this, and then one plus X, when X is greater than this. Eh? Uh -huh. So it's in the same notation we have. So X is zero if X belongs to this outcome, or is this outcome is one, if X is this outcome and that outcome is two, if X is what, head, head. Mm -hmm. So you can see that knowledge is continuous. What you did from the previous step, okay, is connected with what we are doing this step. Any question? Okay, let's take another example. So we'll take another example. Hmm. So in the next example here, we are tossing three coins, okay? So if we toss three coins, then three coins. So it means that we should have three coins coming at a time, okay? So the first coin could be head, this could be head, this could be what, head, okay? Uh -huh. So we can have head, 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 but the first two being a head, the third being a tail, first head, second tail, third head, okay? Uh -huh. So if you like, you can either use a true diagram or you pair it, okay? So uh, how do we call it? In the case of the third event, you have head and, uh, and tail. Hmm? It's better when you use, usually when you use uh, the tree diagram. <clears throat> so in the first event, you have head, tail. In the second coin, you have head, tail. And then head tail for second coin, okay? Then in the third coin, so in third coin, each will also have head tail. So head tail, head tail. This will also be head tail. And then finally, you have what? Head, tail, okay, good. So we can easily generate our uh, sample space from what? Head, 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 means first is head, second is head, uh, head, 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 okay? Or head, head, tail, okay? Or you have head, tail, head or head, tail, tail, or tail, head, head, tail, head, tail, 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 head, or tail, tail, tail. Okay, so that will give you the sample space. So in the sample space, this is our sample space, okay? Then the next question is, what is the rule? The rule here, once again, says what? We are observing a head, okay? observing a head. So if that is a rule, we have to count how many heads are in the experiment or in how many heads are in each outcome of what? The sample space of the experiment. So here we have what? Three heads in the first outcome. In the second outcome, we have two heads, two heads, two heads one head, one head, one head, and then zero heads. So the possible outcomes of the, uh, the random variable will be what? Zero. 
eh, one, two, and three. Those are the possible real number values. Now it is zero if X is a tail, 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 means all three points recorded tails. Okay, then it is one. If you have one what? Head. So those occurs in the case of head, tail, 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 head, tail, or tail, tail, head. Then it is two, where you have two heads. So that will be head, head, tail, head, tail, head, or tail, head, head. And then three in the case of head, head, head. Okay, so that gives you the random variable, okay, of the experiment. I think with this second example, we should all be okay. If there are any questions you can ask, then we move on. Okay. I think we are all clear with the second example. Uh, I'm seeing Felix, your hand up. I don't know if you have raised your hand and new. So Felix, I've asked you to unmute. Okay. Oh, Mark, Mark, uh, I can't bear it. Mark. Sir. Yes, go ahead. Sir, please, I'm asking after this, that's all, there is another calculation again. Yes, that's all for the random variable. Uh -huh. So we are going to the next concepts. Then we'll look at how to advance this. Okay, so this is how to write the random variable. This is how to write it. Okay. Okay, I think this is clear enough. And uh, some of you are wondering if it's so simple like this. Uh, so it's, it's actually simple like it looks. So let's move on to the next point. Now, there are two main types of random variables, eh? or stochastic processes. We have discrete random variables, and we have what? Continuous random variables. So for example, the number of cars that arrive at a car park is a discrete random variable, because we can count it, and they are finite. But the, the time it takes to be served at a, a bank, okay, or at a restaurant, it's a continuous word, random variable, because time is continuous. There again, the time it takes for the first phone call to arrive is also a continuous random variable, because time is continuous. Now, anytime we outline all the possible values of the random variable. So the possible values of the random variable were the 0, 1, 2, 3. Eh? If we outline the possible values of the random variable x, okay, x, i, with their corresponding probability. So if we write 0, 1, 2, 3, eh? and then we include the probabilities of those x, i, we have constructed what we call as probability distribution, okay? Uh -huh. So just like frequency distribution, you see from the beginning, I gave you an overview. So use the frequency distribution to plot the frequency gap. Probability distribution to is where you have your X and the corresponding probabilities, which will be used to plot what? The probability curve. okay? So a list of all the probabilities, the possible values of X, are with their corresponding probabilities gives us the probability distribution of a process. Okay, specifically in the case of a discrete random process. Okay, so you take note of that. Now let's move on. I'll give you the concepts. I don't want to allow you for today. Some have to be done in class, but let's look at the rules. So the next thing we have to know is the concept of what 
the of properties of the probability mass function. So here we are on discrete random variable. Okay, good. So what we have to first know is that the probability distribution, uh, which we just defined as a sequence of the list of the sequence of the SIs with their corresponding probabilities is the probability distribution. Now, when the process or the random variable is a discrete random variable, we refer to the probability distribution as a probability mass function. It's just a special name. Eh? So it's the same thing. Just like uh, uh, somebody will pick a guy name, eh? a nickname for himself. It's the same thing. So the root name is probability distribution. But when it is a, ran a discrete random variable, we call it a probability mass function, a PM, okay? And what we have to take note is this notation are the same. So if I write small p of xi, it is the same as capital P of the, here I'm writing the random variable is equal to this value, okay? So I can, sometimes I can find the probability that x is equal to, is equal to two. And uh, uh, when I write it like this, this is the notation I'm referring to. But this thing is the same as writing it as P of two. When I write P of two, uh, P of two is the same as P of X is equal to two. Okay, it's the same notation. So you take note of that. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing you have to know, which we've already seen before, we said probability of any event is between zero and one. And then the sum of all probabilities of events are equal to one. Okay, so we'll be using this rule very shortly when we meet. Then uh, we also have the cumulative distribution. Cumulative distribution means you are going to sum all the probabilities to you get to the point X. So if I ask you to, for example, find the probability of X, Okay, x uh, greater than or equal to two. Okay, this is going to be what? The p of, so if we have probability of, let's say if it's in a, a, the, the rule of a die, eh, then we have p of one plus the probability of, of two, okay? <laughs> so the question in this case would be, find the probability of observing at least a two in the rule of a die, then it means it's going to be the probability of observing one or the probability of observing what? Two, okay, so you add them together. Okay, so anytime you are doing addition, you are keeping, you adding till you get to the point S, then you are doing a cumulative distribution, okay, of, the probabilities. Eh? So we refer to that as a cumulative distribution function. Okay. So that is written as P of X less than or equal to a value, say, X. Okay. Um, I think we'll look at the probability distribution of two processes and then close for today. So we are told that we have a, a fair coin is tossed three times. If X represents the number of heads that show up, find the probability distribution of X. That's the question. Okay, so let me clear the screen and then we do that. So we are looking at heads that show up. Eh? Uh -huh. We have to find the probability distribution of the process. So as usual, you first have to write the random variable, which we have already seen. So the random variable for three coins uh, is going to be what we have here. We've seen that already, okay? Now the next question is how do we get the probabilities? First, you have to know the number of outcomes in the sample space. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight. So there are eight outcomes in the sample space. Okay. So if you want the probability of event equal to zero, event equal to zero means no head. Eh? No head is just tail, tail, tail in all three points. Do you understand? Uh -huh. So that possibility will be there is only one possibility of that in the sample space. Eh? Only one possibility. Eh? There's only one possibility of a tail, tail, tail. So that would be one out of the eight. So the probability that X is equal to zero is what? One over eight. So we put that here. Then the probability that X is equal to one, meaning we have one head. Eh? There are three outcomes. So this is possible. This is one outcome, two, and then this is three. So the possibility of P being equal to one will be three over what? Eight. Then the possibility of observing two heads is also going to be what? There are three possibilities here. Head, head, tail, head, tail, head, tail, head, head. So we have three over eight. And then finally, we have the possibility of having three heads is only one, one possible outcome out of the eight. So that would be what? One over eight. So we'll go and combine these probabilities with the possible values of the X to obtain our probability distribution. So you control the table like that. You have the possible values of your X, zero, one, two, three then you assign their probability. So one over eight, three over eight, three over eight, and then one over eight. Okay, that gives us the probability mass function because we are dealing with what? A discrete random variable. So it's the probability distribution of what? A discrete random variable. Very well. Is that clear to everyone? If it's not clear, you can ask your question. If it's clear, uh, just give me an okay or a yes on your chat. Okay. Yeah, I think we are okay. So now let me come to the next form. So this can also be rewritten. Okay. Yeah, somebody says it's cool. Yes, I like that. Okay. So we are coming to rewrite uh, the function. You see, we said it's a probability function. So we are also coming to write a probability like a function. Okay. So I can write the probability P of X. So it's a probability function. P of X having the values. Now that we are moving on, somebody has raised the hand. Yes, Saki, how do we help you? Saki, your question. Yes. yes. Can, there, can there be a situation where you'll be asked to find probability of, of um, um, head and tail? Your question is, can there be a Hello. situation where the where random you ask variable, you? listen, where the random variable will be defined as observing a tail? Okay. Uh -huh. So yes, there can be that situation. Okay. So it's a random variable that determines what values will be reported. Okay, okay, I see, thank you. Okay, let me continue. So now I want to write the probabilities also in a function form. So if I'm writing the probability, it would have looked like this. That would be one over eight. The first one I had was one over eight, right? When X was equal to what? Is equal to zero. Then the second one is three over eight. Please follow carefully. When X was equal to what? 
1. The third one is also 3 over 8. When x was what? x was equal to what? 2. And then finally, we have 1 over 8. When x is what? When x is equal to what? 3. Now, if we are talking about probabilities, this is 1 over 8. This is 1 over 8. It's the same chance, not so. Uh -huh. So we can combine them and just say that when x is equal to 0 and 1, and, and what? 3. And then this is 3 over 8. This is also 3 over 8. So we can combine the two, two, and just say when x is 1 and 2. OK, so we rewrite it in this form. So we say that the probability is 1 over 8. If x is 0, it's 1 over 8. If x is 3, it's also 1 over 8. And then here also we write probability is 3 over 8. If x is 1 or 2, so meaning if x is 1, probability is 3 over 8. If x is 2, probability is 3, sorry, 3 over 8. If x is 1, probability is 3 over 8. Or if x is 2, probability is what? 3 over 8. That is what we are saying here. Is it clear to you? If it's clear, just give me a yeah or yes on the page. Is it clear to everyone? Okay, so very good. So now that we've gotten this, now we are coming to change the function a little bit. Okay, we are coming to change the function a little bit. So look at it carefully. Uh, <laughs> just look at it carefully. So if you've gotten this, then the rest should not be difficult. Now, I could equally write the probability like this. Instead of writing this, I can easily give you probability of x is equal to k x if x is equal to 0 and 3 and then 3 over 8 if uh, okay you let me just make it like this if x is equal to 1 over 2 hey sorry 1 and 2 so 1 comma 2 and then this time i'm going to ask to find the value of what K, okay, I'm going to ask you to find the value of K. Yes. Now, the trick here is this probability distribution was constructed from the table, which we all know. So if I give you the probability distribution in this form, then what you need to do is to convert it back in the table form. That's the first step, okay? So all you need to do is go back to the table form, rewrite this. You have X, you have P of X. The possible values of X are zero, one, two, and what three then what is the probability when x is zero the probability is what k x okay k times x do you understand uh -huh. so because x is zero please listen carefully because x itself is zero k times zero will be what zero So when x is 0, the probability is kx. But because x is 0, eh, it's k times 0. So that is 0. 
Then we go to x equals to one. When x is one, the probability is what? Three over eight. When x is two, the probability, this is s is two, the probability is still what? Three over eight. And then when x is three, the probability is what? Kx, but this time x is what? Three, okay? So it's going to be three k, eh? k times three. So that will be, the probability will be three k. Okay, good. Any question? If there are no questions, just give me yes on the page before I continue. Yeah, Mark Elikem. Mark Elikem. Mark Elikem. Okay, Mark is not concentrating. He's being unmuted and he's, he's doing something else. Felix. Felix, please, when we are explaining, when I'm explaining, listen attentively, okay? Listen attentively. Don't be doing two things at the same time. And then when you finish, you ask us to repeat, okay? Listen attentively. So somebody is asking uh, explanation for the key. I'm saying that, I can, instead of this way, I can rewrite the question like this and ask you to find a K. Okay, so it's a new question I'm posing to you. Eh? It's not part of what we have done. We finished with what we've done. But I'm saying that I could also pose a question where this time I will make, eh, I'll intentionally leave part of the probability unknown and ask you to find the value of K. And I'm saying that if you are given a probability with K like this, uh, it's just a matter of reversing the process. Because the PMF was de derived from the table, just go back and convert it in the tabular form. So all we're doing is to convert this question into a tabular form. That is all what we did. And we said to do that, write the values of the given x, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then write their corresponding probability. When x is 1, the probability is 3 over 8, so put it there. When s is 2, probability is 3 over 8, put it there. When x is 0, probability is kx. But because x is 0, k times 0 will be what? 0. And when x is 3, probability is kx. X is three, so K times three will be what? Three K, that is all we said. Uh, we should not be something difficult to understand. Okay, so I've explained it again. Now let me move on to the next step. Then the next step is to get the value of K, we know that the sum of all probabilities, okay, of mutually exclusive events, in an experiment is equal to one. Hmm? We know that the sum of PIs in an experiment, okay, equals to what? One, that is the second answer. Hmm? So which means if we add all the probabilities here, we should get one. So let's do that. Zero plus three over eight plus three over eight, plus 3k should be equal to what? Should be equal to one. OK? 
Okay, good. So if that is the case, we are going to add this. This will be three over eight. So we have three K equals to what? One minus six over eight, okay? Three over eight plus three over eight is six over eight. Okay. And then one minus six over eight, it what? will be two over eight. Huh? So when you do the change of subjects, let me find space and then do that calculation. So this will give us what? This is what? 3K, 3K is equal to what? Is equal to two over eight, okay? Now dividing through by three to make K the subject will give us K is equal to what? When we divide through by three, you get two over what? Three times eight, okay? 